Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode on the channel and today what we're going to do is to finish up our site plan. Yes, so we're going to add some annotations and details and call it a day, wrap it up, done with that. It's been a while since I uploaded a video and that's because I got really, really busy and also I was taken down by the fever that is going around. So, um, you know, I had to take some time to recuperate. I said, right? And get back to the level where I need to be, you know what I mean? Uh, if it's your first time on the channel, thank you for joining. I hope that by the end of the video, you'll, you know, learn something and you will also subscribe, drop a comment, hit the like button. Just do one of those things. And for those of you who have been here already, you don't know the thing, go big up yourself. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys. So here we are back in AutoCAD architecture. And already you know what we're going to do. We're going to be adding annotations, details to this site plan. And of course, we would have done probably 80 to 85% of the job already where we drew, uh, you know, the site plan and the building and everything already. So, you know, easy movements today. Before I get any deeper into this, though, I want to show you a couple of changes that I made to this project. Um, minor changes, but very important. So if you go back to our project navigator and go over to our constructs tab here, we can see that um, there's nothing underneath my elements folder here. So what I realized was that anything that is inside of your elements folder will not be printed on your sheets when we go to create sheets. And um, everything we had here is needed on sheets. So I had to move them over into our constructs folder. So if you notice, we have the legend moved over, we have the grid lines moved over, and we also have the property boundary. And it's pretty simple. All you got to do is to just click and drag it into your construct folder. And once you do that, you'll get a pop-up that is asking you to select which level you want to add it to. Um, so if I should right click on this and go to properties, Something like this should pop up and um, you would select the ground floor and you'd hit OK. And then once you do that, it's going to ask you if you want to repath this drawing. You're just going to say repath now and move forward with the process. All right. And the same thing applies for grid line and property boundary. For the grid lines, what I did here was to add it to both levels because we want to see the grid line on the foundation drawing as well as the ground floor drawing all right so make sure you select both levels yeah so that's that all right and then when you go back over to views you want to make sure that you re-add those into your views so for the legend we wanted to make sure that it is re-added into our drainage electrical drawing so go to properties and go down to content and you just want to make sure that the legend is selected here as well as everything else that you would have needed in this drawing and for the foundation plan where we had the grid lines, you want to make sure that uh, you have the grid lines selected here as well. All right, we hit OK. And of course, for the site plan, you want to make sure that you have the property boundary selected as well as everything else that we need, which would include the drainage layout drawing or construct. All right, so make sure you go through and you select what is necessary for each drawing and, you know, make sure it's everything all right. See me answer? So now that we are here in this drawing, let's go ahead and add some annotations and details. And the first thing we want to do is to set our scale because you don't know that's the rule of the game. You have to set your scale before you start. In this case, we're going to be using a one in eight of an inch. This is equivalent to one in 100 if you're using millimeters. And of course, this is the typical scale that we use for site plan. But of course, you can go up a little further and a little further if it is that you have a larger building or a larger property. But we're going to use the regular acceptable scale, one in 100 or one eighth of an inch, and we're going to move forward. The next thing we're going to do is to kind of highlight the corners of the property using a tool that is located within our tool palette. So we're going to go to the settings button and you go down to what is called document. I hope that you're seeing this. And we're going to go up to datum point. 
so this is what we want to use to highlight our corners so we're going to click on it and we're going to be adding you know to each corner so let's add it in this corner here it is asking us for a rotation we're going to just use zero degrees and we're going to repeat the command for each corner zero 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 all right I, I i don't know if these should be at a particular angle if somebody knows uh, please tell me in the description below all right so now that we can see all five corners of the property let's go ahead and add the property boundary label on here so we're going to go to text and we're going to draw a text box here and we're going to say property boundary and you're going to type the length in this case i'm going to be typing 15.61 meters i'm using meters here even though i drew this drawing in inches um, i'm using millimeters because that's what is acceptable here in jamaica all right so if your country accepts feet and inches then by all means go ahead and use what is acceptable so i had to convert my thing to meters so i can have it there yeah so we're going to just copy this and we're going to do the same thing on this side so of course i'm going to fast forward the video just to get ahead of this part all right so there we have all four or five labels and of course we kind of want to rotate them so how i rotate them is to click on the rotate and click on the line that i want it to be aligned to and then i'll just move my next point like that and of course it now aligns i can now move it to somewhere that is uh, suitable i'm gonna do the same thing here rotate click on the line and click your next point somewhere out there now i'm gonna move it put it about right there that one is pretty good and i'm gonna do the same thing with this all right then i'm going to move it place it about here i think this is a good spot in fact i might do the same thing with these kind of put them more towards the corner put it towards the corner all right good so that's that um what i'm gonna do next is to add some other information such as maybe like for instance i could add in the middle of this paved driveway and you want to basically label as much as you can on your site plan things that you think will be of importance so if you had like posts or walls or fence you know you kind of want to make sure that you add a little label to say such all right so this is a paved driveway um uh, what i'm gonna do now is to put a note in the middle of this building so let me write it out here i'm gonna write proposed building and of course i want this text to be a little bit bigger so i'm gonna increase the size to say quarter of an inch and i'm going to actually mask it out so let's mask it out okay so that when i place it it will just you know cover up everything just like that and then what i'll do next is to label the street so of course you don't know if you don't remember what the name of the street is then you need to go back to your properties or your project go into your project information all right you go inside of that and check to see uh, what street where the property is located so of course this would be on hatfield avenue and i want this to be a little bit bigger as well so i'm going to make this one over eight so that's the name of this street and i'm going to copy this again just a little bit smaller i'm going to say this street leads to spur tree hill i don't know if that's how it's spelled <laughs> from mandeville okay good so now um the next thing i'm going to do is to copy this big text here and i'm going to place it at the back because we do have a river running behind here called duns river and you definitely want to label that out and we also do have a retaining wall at the back all right so definitely want to call that out if you notice my leader is underlining the stuff and i hate that so i need to fix it all 
All right, so that is that. Um, is there anything else that I need to add o over there? I don't think so. So now what we need to do is to label our drainage system. And if you remembered clearly, we actually have done this before for the drainage plan. So what I'm going to do is to go over to the drainage plan that we did earlier in this episode. If you missed it, check the link below or above. And we're going to basically copy all of these text and writings. What I'll do is to just highlight and I'll say select similar. And of course, I don't want this part, but everything else. Actually, we don't need the ones inside of the house. So we can uncheck those and we're going to copy control C, go over to our site plan. And before we paste them, I kind of want to uh, isolate. I'm going to isolate this by itself. Isolate. Good. I just wanted to get rid of everything so that I can paste my uh, text. So we're going to go ahead and um, paste, but we're going to use the command paste or ridge. There it is. All right. I learned this command from a subscriber or a, a viewer of the channel. He posted it on our video and I'm like, cool. I didn't know that. So here we go. We're going to use it in this video. When you select paste orange, what it does is to paste your text in the exact same position as they were uh, in the previous drawing that you copied it from. All right. So there we go. We have everything where we want it. But of course, I wanted them to be isolated so that I can address the scale because we copied from a quarter inch scale to a one eighth of an inch scale. So obviously these texts would be too small. They should be at least the size of this one that we're looking at here. So what we're going to do is to highlight all of the, those that we copied over and we're going to right click and we're going to go to add current scale. Just like that, everything is now on the correct scale. But also, if you click on one of these, let me click on this, you can see that um, the quarter inch scale is kind of still there in the background and we want to get rid of that. So I'm going to highlight everything again and I'm going to say delete scale. And I'm going to delete the scales that I don't need. So I only want the one eighth of an inch scale to be seen. And once we do that, everything is now only on a one eighth of an inch scale. All right. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go to our thing here and we're going to end the isolation. So we bring everything back. And of course, we're going to have to make some adjustments to these to make sure that everything is where they are ought to be. All right. So we're going to just move things around a little bit to make sure that there is no obstruction. The good thing though is that we didn't have to go and rewrite everything. We just copy and paste. That's the beautiful thing about this copy and paste thing. That's done. All right. So we just want to see the information that is outside. And that's why we didn't bother to bring in the ones on the inside because those are not necessary. I'm going to move this over. A little bit like that and that looks about good i'm gonna move these over a little bit too so that they are not obstructing anything that up a little bit move this over a little bit move that down a little bit and of course this one we need to fix it i'm gonna put it on this side manhole three and it looks good so far i can't complain mm. all right so the last thing i'm gonna add here is the lot number so of course on the surveys report you would see uh, the adjacent lots so for instance on this side of the property there is a lot number seven for example i'm just putting this there um, and then the current lot would be what the next one in the sequence lot number eight and on the opposite side would be lot number nine or whatever the case may be all right so that's what we're going to have there. And then finally, we're going to be adding dimensions. You know, you can't leave off the dimensions. All right. So what we're going to do is to move over to a dimension layer and we're going to add dimensions. In this situation, we're going to be using aligned dimension because not all of our dimensions will be in a linear fashion. So click on aligned and we're going to start at the front of the building. All right, so you want to take your dimensions from the edge of the wall to the 
boundary line. That's important. Don't take it from the roof. Always take it from the building itself. And of course, you want to take it from the closest point of that building um, to the boundary line. All right. And in a little while, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add one right here and we're going to drag it down to the boundary. And of course, you want to make sure that you're seeing that green box that says perpendicular. That's important. All right. So click and we're going to place it maybe like right there where it's visible. And we're going to draw another one from here from the wall again to the center of the road. Some places require this one, some places don't. Um, but in this case, we're gonna add it. And then we're gonna do this side. And of course, as I said, you want to capture the part of the building that is closest to, to the boundary line. So if you notice, this end would be a little bit further away and this end would be a little bit closer. So you want to make sure that you capture. If not both, you wanna capture the closest. All right, so see that perpendicular kind came up. All right, we want to make sure that that comes up and we're going to drop it right there in the clear. Then we're going to add one at the back of the property. I'm trying to find a clean area, maybe somewhere along here. There we go, perpendicular. And we're going to drop this one right there. And of course, on this side, we're going to add it closer to this end where it is closer to uh, the property boundary. So go ahead, make sure you see a perpendicular thing come up and then you drag and draw. I'm going to just add one and uh, another one to the uh, to this line here. See the perpendicular box came up. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag this one out and get something like that. And that's it, guys. We could actually add one last thing to this, which I'm going to just do in the blink of an eye. All right. So here I have created this little arrow and with just some rectangles and, uh, you know, add the text surface water. And what we can do here is to just copy this and place it in places where we think, uh, well, in this case, I want the surface water to run off towards the back of the property. So I'm going to just paste this in various places over the site plan, which would indicate that surface water would be running in that particular direction. Of course, this one's kind of probably need to be rotated that way. So it's going around. So the landscape is kind of sloped towards the back of the property so that we have a surface water running in that direction. So that would be the last thing I would add, add on here um, and, and call it a day. That's it for our site plan. And so we're going to go ahead and hit the save button. All right. So that's the end of this video today. Remember to download this sheet in the description below for your reference. Because I know you're going to forget some of the stuff you learned just now. You see me? I say so. Go ahead, click the link, download. I hope that you learned something. If you did, definitely hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Drop a comment. And I want to say a shout out to my patrons over on my Patreon page. If you haven't gone over there to just check out the page, see what's going on, then definitely do so. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cool. <laughs>